What's up everyone, it's Farhan. I'd like to wish you all a happy new year and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm gonna talk about tips to get better hyperlapses from your DJI Mavic 3. Last month, DJI surprised us with a new firmware update that included Hyperlapse. These features were supposed to be out on a new firmware update somewhere in January. Hyperlapses are so much fun to create and they make your videos stand out even more. They add more depth to your videos. I always try to incorporate at least one or two hyperlapses in my videos because it just looks so much more better. Before getting into the hyperlapse modes, I'm gonna talk about what you need to do before. First thing is, make sure you're not creating your hyperlapse on a windy day it goes without saying this is because it will save you a lot of effort in post to try and stabilize your hyperlapse so if you can't film on a day if you can create your hyperlapse on a day when there's not too much wind not too much gust it'll be perfect because uh, you'll have less work in post to stabilize your hyperlapse second is i use nd filters in the day to get my shutter speed down to about one over fifth of a second or one over fourth of a second, which is recommended for creating hyperlapses to get a good amount of motion blur. So if you're creating hyperlapses in the day, depending on how bright it is, you need to get dark ND filters. If you got the Flymore combo, you got the ND32, which is the darkest ND filter in that set. And that'll help you on an overcast day like this. Uh, you can also adjust your aperture as you wish, but I recommend shooting in f2.8 to about f4.5, maybe a little bit above that, but I find the best um, results using these apertures. So in the day, you wanna make sure you wanna use these apertures, but at night, f2.8, that's it. f2.8, the best aperture um, to make hyperlapses at night. As for ISO, I keep my ISO at 100 when I'm filming hyperlapses in the day. And I, it depends at night, generally 400, 800, maybe 1600, but that adds noise to your hyperlapse. But there's no issue, you can always denoise it in post. Now, if you bought the Mavic 3 Cine version, you've got another set of ND filters, which are even darker. I think starting from ND64 and up, if I'm not mistaken, you can use those in bright conditions to get your shutter speed down. But if you don't have that, you can always purchase them from other companies such as Freewell. I'll try and link their ND filters in the description below. So if you're interested, check that out. As far as hyperlapse modes go, there's four waypoints circle course lock and free my favorite has to be the waypoint hyperlapse because you can set your own points and the drone will move along those points creating a hyperlapse for you and it's pretty impressive i also like the course lock um, hyperlapse mode it's pretty fun straightforward you can move in one direction or tap on a subject and give you that helicopter feel and the circle hyperlapse is also pretty impressive. All you need to do is just draw a box around a around an object and it'll move in a circle, creating hyperlapse around that subject. Another thing I want you to keep in mind is that creating hyperlapses does use up a lot of battery. So make sure that you have all your batteries fully charged and bring the drone back anywhere between 20 and 30%. Now let's get into different hyperlapse modes. To begin your hyperlapse, Click the video icon and scroll down to hyperlapse and here you'll find the four different options and choose waypoints. Well, I'm going to be working with waypoints. As I mentioned earlier, it's my favorite one. So I'm going to be working with this one for now. So what I recommend when doing waypoint hyperlapse is to set your end waypoint first and then move back all the way to your starting waypoint. This is because if you start off with your waypoint as your starting waypoint and then you move back to the end your drone will have to go back all the way to the starting waypoint and then create a hyperlapse from there and waste a lot of battery so it's better to start your end waypoint first and then move it to your starting waypoint and then hit the sequence change the sequence to reverse this way you'll save a lot of battery and you Actually, will and probably might be able to um, have a waypoint using just one battery because it does take a lot of time to fly to different spots 
and um, choose different waypoints now I usually choose a two second interval as well so if you want more you can choose more but it'll take longer another thing to keep in mind is I usually set my hyperlapse lens to at least 10 seconds this is because it gives you more room to work with so if you want to increase if you want a certain part of it you can always take it and you can speed it up but it's always better to have more now that I've exported all the raw photos from the SD card onto my computer I'm importing them to my choice of editing photo editing app which is Lightroom I will not be adding a lot of heavy edits because I want to just have a very natural look I mean you can choose any presets that you have and apply it and then make adjustments from there but I prefer to just edit them to have a very natural look this is because if I'm adding when I'm adding it to the rest of my footage I wanted to match the color tones there because I do my own color grading um, when I film in D-Log so I wanted to match the looks there so I can still change the colors and play around with them there too so I don't really go very heavy on the editing here I just give them a natural look um, some exposure um, reduce the highlights bring up the shadows depending on situation uh, work with the whites and blacks give it a little bit of clarity and then i reduce the texture to reduce the that grunginess that the clarity brings um i leave i usually leave the saturation at zero um maybe sometimes i pull up the vibrance a little bit but yeah and i might add some sharpening as well and um increase change the radius and um, the masking of the sharpening but that's about it once you've completed your edits select all the photos and click sync this will sync all the edits to the rest of the photos once you're done editing and you're ready to export just click on file and export now there's a couple of settings here that you might want to change make sure they're in JPEG and the quality is on maximum and um, change the sharpening for screen and make sure it's high and then also export it to a folder of your choice your desktop or your hard drive so you make sure that it's all contained in that subfolder I use Final Cut Pro to edit my video so I'm bringing in all those exported images into Final Cut Pro and I am gonna select them all and change the duration to one second and then I'm gonna change the size to fit the screen once this is done I am going to export the video file and then bring it into Adobe's After Effects for more for really good stabilization now you don't have to get this but the one in Final Cut Pro is not that good Now how your hyperlapse turns out depends on a lot of things. For example, the speed at which the Mavic 3 was flying when creating the hyperlapse, the winds, etc, etc. Make sure that your hyperlapses are shooting in 4K RAW because you have a lot of flexibility of editing your photos in post. That's it for this video guys. I hope you found some value. Do give it a thumbs up and subscribe because it really helps out this video and this channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. I need all the wins, yeah. yeah. Ain't no L's, I gotta get a no call to quit, yeah. yeah. Gotta keep on moving no matter how hard it gets, yeah. yeah. Better move out the way, cause I'm coming with hard.